it's autumn and we have an embarrassment of fruit. Awful lot of apples need to do something with it and I thought I'd go for a little autumn forage to provide something extra. Now foraging, you can find all sorts of things when you're foraging. Uh, best not to do foraging in town unless you have no alternative because there's just so much rubbish there and also the plants tend not to be the wild varieties. I'm going out of town, off down the little green lane, and this will take me the quickest way possible to the canal. In society we're given certain options as to what we can consume, and that's basically it. We're told to believe that this is all the options we have, but there is more out there. You just have to go and look for it. And many of those other options are protected in law. Now some people think that foraging is a form of stealing, that you're going out of the countryside and you're taking stuff. Well theft and stealing is regulated by the Theft Act 1968. And section one of the Act defines what theft is. It's taking with the intention of permanently depriving somebody of something. And that sounds very straightforward in terms of foraging, but there's an exemption. Section four, paragraph three, there's a specific exemption for anybody who picks wild mushrooms growing on any land or who picks flowers, fruits or foliage from a plant growing wild on any land and does so without the idea of commercial gain. So just going out to collect your own berries, bits and pieces, that's fine. Now I'm on a footpath, no problem about that, public footpath. Lots of areas of land are what they call access land under the Countryside Human Rights and Way Act. There is an exemption under the Crow Act uh, that basically means anybody who removes or damages or destroys any plant, which includes foraging, loses their rights of access. It's still not stealing, but you don't have any right of access anymore. So here we are, blackberries, give them a taste, see what they're like. I like to take a clip top container, not just because it's easy to carry, but they have that little gasket in the lid, so if the juice leaks, it doesn't fill your rucksack full of juice. And when you pick a blackberry, don't squeeze the berry. Cup your fingers behind the berry and pull towards you. Now, if the blackberry is ripe, it will literally just fall off. And if it's just about ripe, then it will come. If the blackberry doesn't come, when you very gently tug at it, it's not ripe and you don't want to be picking it anyway. And so you just work your way through, picking away at the blackberries. Don't take them all. Don't take the ones that are red. Uh, leave some for other people to take later on. Carrying on down the canal, out towards the countryside. Here we have some hawthorn berries. Now these are probably not quite ripe, but if you take a hawthorn berry, give it a squeeze, You'll see it has a sort of yellowy piff with a large pip in the middle. And these are actually quite nutritious, but don't eat the pip. Take the berry, give it a suck, uh, chew it up, suck it, get the pip out and then spit the remainder out. You'll also see other things walking down the towpath. Here's some crab apples. It's very rare to find crab apples, real crab apples. They tend to have crossbred with cultivated varieties, which is why they're so big. Uh, but if you try and eat one of these, you'll, you'll get a bad stomach because they're not very good for you. They do contain a lot of pectin there, so they, they're very good for making jam. Been a bad year for butterflies this year, and there seems to be a sudden flurry of, of butterflies towards the end of the summer. Sunning itself on the leaf. Here's rose hips. And rose hips are hard little berries from the dog rose. Now, you try and squeeze one, it won't move. It's, it's completely solid. And that's because it's packed full of little seeds. Now, the seeds are an irritant. You definitely wouldn't want to eat one. And it can even irritate your skin. So if you take the outside of the berry, scrape out the pips, you're left with the, the shell. Uh, that's not really edible either. But what they did for many years, particularly during the Second World War, they would cook those shells with some, some fluid 
and produces very thick, rich syrup, which is very high in vitamin C, very good for you. Let's continue picking blackberries. You'll see the brambles, they tend to just wind their way through the hedgerow and stick out. The trouble is, because they flail the hedges every year these days, and the berries grow on the second year's growth, then it's actually quite difficult to find blackberries and other types of fruit, because flailing does kill hedges. That, that's the problem with modern hedge management. Oh well, look, I seem to have filled my box. And we've got to the edge of town. Now blackberries are very heavy, they're very full of water, so if you put them in a bowl of cold water the blackberries fall and all the bits of rubbish, all the bits of cob cobweb and things will just float to the surface and you can skim them off. I'm making some basic pastry, plain flour. I'm using oil but you could use margarine if you wish. Some people add sugar to their pastry, I'm adding a little tiny bit but not a lot. This is an awful lot of pastry. Well that's because I just picked 1.2 kilos of blackberries and I've got about 2 kilos of apples to add to that. So that's an awful lot of apple turnovers. Peel the apple. Uh, these are industrial apples, they were grown and bought. Uh, if it was uh, an apple which wasn't sprayed you wouldn't need to do that. I'm not adding sugar to this mix. What I do is I add mixed fruit. That adds sweetness, but it also adds minerals. It's better than the empty calories of actual just raw sugar. And then in go the blackberries. Now you see a whitish tinge to this. That's because I've sprinkled it over with lots of semolina. And the semolina, when it's cooked, will swell up, absorb the juice, so it doesn't run everywhere and make a mess and also it's semolina adds a bit of protein. So here's my big wad of pastry. It's had some time to stand while I was peeling the apples. And now I'm just chopping it into lumps, ready to make each of the turnovers. The reason I'm making apple turnovers is it's quite simple. If you make apple turnovers, you don't need lots of pie tins. All you do, you roll up the dough, put the fruit inside, and it cooks inside its own case. Makes life an awful lot easier. I'm going to start by putting some of the mix into this bowl. Why I'm doing that will become apparent later. Pack it in, level it off and put it to one side. Now I'm going to flour the table and begin to roll out each of the lumps of dough. Not in a circle but in a sort of oval shape and that's because I want to fold these in half. I'm going to wet the edge and scuff it a little. That's so that it provides a better seal. If you just roll the edge together, sometimes it leaks when you cook. A bit of water softens the dough, makes it seal a lot better. So now I scoop on a quarter of what remains and then form it into a little pad of fruit inside the, the circle of the dough. Neaten up the edge and then pull it over the top. And I begin just by tamping down the edge. And then I'll turn it over to make a good seal so that when it cooks in the oven, the juice and the blackberries and the apples doesn't run everywhere. Now, of course, that's a, a sealed container now, so what I have to do is put a couple of holes in the top because otherwise the steam from cooking would burst your little pastry envelope. So there we are, turnover number one. And that's turnover number two. And there's turnover number three. And now we have turnover number four. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to freeze these. Uh, these are very large. Uh, each one would last us about a week once it's been cooked. And by keeping them in the freezer, then we can keep them for a few months if we want to. What I'm making now is a crumble topping. 
and some people do very dry crumble toppings. I prefer crumble topping that's more like uh, cookie dough or shortbread. A bit more oil, a bit more sugar and then just liberally sprinkle it all over the top. And again, the recipe for pastry or crumble, you'll find those all over the place. Next morning, the, the crumble has been cooked and already has been eaten. The turnovers have been in the freezer overnight and as you can see they're a bit icy because they're covered in frost. That will keep us going for at least a month or two months so that over the winter we can take them out and cook. Much better than jam making because you destroy less of the nutrition and you're adding less empty calories in the form of sugar. What I'd encourage you to do, go out and discover your local area, find what's there and if you walk regularly towards the end of the year you'll know where and when you can go and find blackberries, hawthorn berries and you'll be able to supplement your, your everyday food with the taste of the wine.